I am so excited to be filming this video. This is my March reading wrap up. I read seven books in uh, April, uh, March. I read some big titles, you guys. I read a book by my two most favorite authors in the world. I read sci fi, fantasy, contemporary, comics, young adult. I read like a little bit of everything, some good books. Like, I am so proud of myself. Yeah, let's just get started. I'm really excited. So the first one is Paper Girls, this is volume 5 by Brian K. Vogan and Kip Cliff Chang. This comic series has just been getting better and better and it's just so crazy that like how this is all fitting together and I feel like this volume of the comic really brought like the stories together a little bit, like it was easier to draw the conclusions between what happens in the past and like where the story is going. I absolutely love stories that are about like time travel slash different dimensions kind of thing. You're following these I think four or five girls, I don't quite remember right now, these male girls who got gets pulled into this like war that kind of like defies time and all of a sudden they're like getting involved in it. It's really good. I really love the artwork actually. I think it's really cool and like I said, I really love that it's coming together in this volume and I'm so excited to continue. Like I can't wait for the next volume. I'm just so excited. I think I gave this four stars or five. I'm not sure. Next, I read The Exiled Queen by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the second book in the Seven Realms series. And I did really enjoy it. This feels kind of like a transition book in my opinion. And I don't actually mind transition books, but I like the transition book to have some sort of goal like the story is moving forward. Unfortunately, this started on a really slow anticlimactic start because the previous book ended in this huge like bang. I probably should say this is a young adult series that is really good. I really love the magic. Um, the first one is The Demon King. And in this one, yeah, it had a really anticlimactic start, but it takes place in this school. The school setting was really cool, but I really, really wish they had more school classes in the book because I really missed that. I felt like they didn't really have that many classes, and there's also more, like, magic and wizard wizardry in this book, but... Uh, the last book they kind of touched on it, but I was hoping it was going to be more explained in this one, especially since some of the main characters are going to a wizard school. And there's also something with the wizard's magic where they are speaking the words uh, to the magic for like a spell or something. And she doesn't write, the author doesn't write what the words are, which actually kind of bothers me because it would be so cool if she just made up like a language or words or just something because it kind of seems like a little lackluster, like it's not very believable when they say, oh, they said this incantation or words, but like the reader doesn't know what it is. Maybe there's a purpose for it, I don't know, but I just kind of like didn't really like that aspect of it. I really loved the characters and the relationships in this book, which is a bigger focus in the story. And I like how the characters are so like mischievous and non-conservative, like I just... I just really like that and I like how they're really dedicated and I write, like reading about really dedicated students because I think I'm a really dedicated student so I like to see that in like others in books. There's also like a secret location in this book where these two like lovers are gonna meet and it's like an unforbidden love which I also love in a story. It's like great when that happens in a young adult in my opinion and they have like a secret location which I think is really cool and there's also a character which you like love to hate in this story so I feel like I'm very passionate about the characters and the relationships which is something I struggle to find in actually adult fantasy and that's kind of also why I read young adult fantasy because I feel like there's a lot of emotions <laughs> obviously because they're teenagers but I really like that. I also really liked how it ended on a cliffhanger because it leads you into the next book really well. I just hope that the next book doesn't have such a slow beginning. I wish the characters would have more drive and would have like accomplished more or like like they didn't really know what they were doing and I guess that's okay but it just felt like there was no point to this part of the story but I gave it four stars and I'm really excited to continue with the series. Next, I read this little thing. This is Haruki Murakami's Birthday Girl. It's a little short story that celebrates Murakami's 70... 70... birthday? Um, this is about like a girl who works in a cafe, I think, and a restaurant maybe. A restaurant makes sense. And then it's just like kind of what happens on her birthday. I really like this. I gave it five stars. Everything he writes is just... amazing! Ugh, I need some coffee. That's some good coffee. I really like it. I highly recommend you read it. It's only 50 pages and the text is so large. 
So I don't know if this counts as a book, but it's like amazing short stories. I don't really, really usually read short stories. The ending was great, really loved it. Next, I read Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is the second book in the Ancestors, maybe four books, three books quartet. The first one was really good. I gave it four stars. I really loved it. But I read it when I was traveling and I have a tendency to let books that I read when I travel to kind of pass over my head. Like I have a, I have a little bit of a difficulty connecting with the characters because I'm reading them in like 10 pages at a time instead of like sitting down and reading like 50, 100 pages at a time which really helps me to connect with a book. And this was just so amazing. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. Like, you have to read the series. What I love about this is that it's an adult fantasy or high fantasy, but it has a young protagonist. And I love adult books about young characters, if that makes sense. I think those are like the best fantasy. Um, so this way you get to follow Nona Gray, which is like a uh, studying to be a nun assassin sort of thing. The last book, this is not kind of a spoiler, but it's gonna make you want to read the series. So in this book, this book, she starts off having a demon in her, having cl like blade claws that she can conjure out of her knuckles. She has black eyes, like the whole of her eyes are like black. How awesome isn't that? Like if that doesn't make you want to read the book, like... I don't know what will. It is so great and I really loved like Nona's like character development like it's so significant like she really evolves and you can see the friendships uh, in this book are getting even closer. It has an amazing sisterhood. The fighting scenes are amazing. The only thing like I don't really like about this book is like how like complicated the politics are like I kind of understand what's happening but some of the people and how they're related, like, it's a little bit... Like, I don't really get it all the time, but it also doesn't bother me that much because the book is just so good. It ended on a cliffhanger and I absolutely can't wait for the next book. And I remember some things from the last, last book, but I didn't remember everything and I was like freaking out. And I was trying to read all these recaps online. But Mark Lawrence, you are a champ because there's a huge recap in the, in the beginning. It says everything you need to know for... Um, this book and it's just three pages of like all the details and I read that three or four times So I really remember everything because if you read it once, it's just like information dump So I read that a couple of times and then I was like already into the story and already caught up and I really loved that It was so helpful and it was just so great. I can't wait. I'm like I gotta give out this book. Oh my god So amazing. Next book what I need it now I, I want to say I waited actually a year for the paperback copy because I have the first one in the paperback and Holy Sister is uh, the third book in the series is coming out next month I think in April already and I don't think I'm gonna wait another year for the paperback guys like I think I'm just gonna buy the big book but they look so good together on the shelf and this cover is just amazing I really love it compared to this one actually Next, I read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a young adult, I wouldn't say it's middle grade, it's young adult science fiction. And in this one, humans are kind of living on this new planet underground and they're constantly being bombed or like attacked by this people in the sky. The main character's father was a pilot, but something happened, he aborted from a mission and now he's known as a coward and she's known, the main character, what's her name, Spensa, is known as the daughter of a coward, but she really, really wants to be a pilot and she really looks up to her dad, but she has a problem getting into the pilot school. And so kind of like the story begins. Spensa's got grown up with all these stories from her grandmother about heroes from Earth and not all of them are accurate and she has like a weird perception of all the old old heroes like she's learned about the Trojan War and stuff and it's just so random but I loved Spensa <laughs> mainly like I haven't laughed out loud from a book in such a long time I wonder if I can find the scene like she is so brutal <laughs> like I want to dance on like the bodies of your like of my enemies or I want to eat the babies of my enemies like she says so many weird things she's just like and she, it's because she's been told all these stories like from her grandmother and she like wants to 
she she's kind of like that's how heroes talk is what she thinks but it's just really really funny because she's like this I don't know 13 year old girl 16 year old girl actually but I think something you should know about the story is that it is mainly like a pilot story and a lot of the scenes and action is taking place in a pilot I really like that because I've never read that kind of book about a plane or a pilot or anything like that before so I really appreciated that and I thought it was really interesting but there's a lot of those scenes and the ending I actually didn't really like I think I gave this like five stars or 4.5 and stuff it was really good and I do really recommend it it's hard for me to find young adult that I actually really love so I really loved this of course because also Brandon Sanderson but I've only let, read his uh, Cosmere books before so it was like a surprise love in a way um, the ending was kind of unbelievable I didn't really really like the resolution I did like the surprise in a way just like half of it I don't want to spoil anything but it was kind of like out there I guess um, but it is a sci-fi so I am open-minded but I'm just I'm really excited for this series I really loved it and I do highly recommend it Next, I read The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. This is the third one in the Gentleman Bastards series. I think the first one is called The Lies of Locke Lamora. This is the one, the last one that's released so far, but I think there's actually going to be more books. It definitely has a nice ending, but it doesn't need to have like everything resolved in a way. So this is an adult fantasy where you're following this these two guys, this bromance, it's an amazing bromance, and one of them is called Locke and the other one is called Jean. They are basically thieves and they're grown up in the same like thieving crew. And in this one, they have kind of taken a job from the Bonsmaji, which are kind of the enemies. They're enemies in a way, they've just had a lot of issues with them in the past and they're basically people who know how to do magic. And this one, I... It's the thickest book in the series so far. I really enjoyed it. It keeps jumping from a, a setting that's happening in the past and a setting that's happening now, kind of. I really liked it um, because they have to kind of rig this political election. And it's not so much about the election, it's more about like how they can win it in a way. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Like obviously that's what an election is about. How to like kind of like trick people into voting I guess. I liked it but there always comes a point in this book where I know that Jean and Locke they're in so much trouble like I just want to like I just want to hide because it's so like embarrassing and they're just like they make such fools out of themselves they're so intelligent and they're so smart and they always come up with these really clever schemes but there's always a point like halfway in the book where you're just like oh no like you messed things up so bad like how can you possibly get out of this? And somehow they always get out of it because they're so intelligent. But in this one, I wish kind of it would have been more like smart. Like, I don't know if that makes any more sense, but I really love reading about smart characters and how they kind of solve their issues. And they definitely do that, but it doesn't have like a big heist or like something similar as in the other books. It's a little bit different because it's like a political thing and they're doing a job for someone else rather than doing it for money or for themselves. So yeah, it's a little bit different. I definitely enjoyed it because this world is amazing. I would recommend this actually for non-fantasy readers or if you're an adult, because it's an adult book and it is a little bit like more difficult to read, but you don't need to know much about like fantasy worlds or anything like that. It's really enjoyable because it's about characters and this heist thing and I really enjoyed that. And I highly recommend this series as a whole. It's a really, really great fantasy series. But I really want to continue. I don't want to let go of Locke. Locke is like my favorite character of all time. I can say that with like a lot of pride. He's my favorite character of all time. Locke Lamora. Um, also, I just want to say there's two things that are happening a lot uh, throughout in the first two books. It's like you're questioning who is Locke Lamora because he doesn't know anything about his past and we don't get to know about it either. What's his real name and who is the love of his life? And those are like the three questions kind of that keeps popping up in the books, but we never get an answer, not even close to one. And this one, you get answers to both, which was really satisfying. I really loved that because I've been like looking forward to it, but now I'm kind of wondering what the coming books are gonna be about, uh, if there are gonna be. I mean, this was published 2013 and it's like 2020 next year, like what? <laughs> so, but I highly recommend this series. The last book I read this month was Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. This is a book I've been attracted to for a really long time and I finally bought it and read it. It's quite a short uh, first book to a fantasy series. This is also high fantasy. You follow these three romance. Yeah, I really like those books. So I'm gonna read their 
Riviera relations soon, like, so I, I'm getting on that train. And you follow these three uh, guys who are great codes, and great codes are basically the servants or the fighters of the king. But now the king is dead, and you're following these three great codes as they're kind of lost in this world. This book really surprised me. It's really different in a way. Like, the premises sounds a lot like a normal fantasy, I guess, but it was just, it had so many levels. I don't know, the fighting scenes were really, really great. And the character is really complicated, like, it's not stereotypical at all. I, I still ha don't really have a concept of who the person, the main character is, and I really feel like he has so much more to show, and I really enjoyed that. The end was just like, bam, 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 loads of plot twists, like, after each other, and you're just like, whoa, how does this all fit together? And I love, like, a good plot twist, or, like, when it blows my mind at the end. And it was done really well. If I have one complaint about this book, it's that kind of, at the end, they were, like, being captured, and then they got released, and then they were being captured, and then they got released, and you're like, okay, when is this gonna end? kind of thing, but it wasn't really that much of an issue because it wasn't really that much of the plot. It was just kind of about the characters and how this whole political thing is gonna go down. It is also so deep and kind of brutal, like you really dig deep into this guy's personality and what he's been through and what other characters have been through. Like it's, it's intense and I really, really loved it actually. I think I gave it 4.5 stars. So those are all the books that I have to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. I read some great fantasy, some great books. And if you read any of these, comment below. Otherwise, comment below what books you read this month. I would love to know. I hope you have a brilliant, really, really day. Have a great reading time. And I will see you guys soon. Bye!